Right. Hi, lovely. Welcome back to my channel. It's Ada Cheke here. So today we'll be talking about the very first and the most important things you will do once you get into the UK. The things we'll be talking about, one of them is your BRP, collection of your BRP card, your student ID card, registration for your NI, registration for to your GP getting your provisional license, getting your discounted rail card, getting your Oyster card for buses to get discount on buses, getting your student bus card. So if these are what also your SIM card, if you've not got someone. So if these are what you would like to know how to go about it, stick with me to this video. And please, please and please, if you have not subscribed, subscribe now i'm waiting for you click the subscription button button right now and like this video to help us reach much more people and also share to any group of students or people that are coming to the uk that you belong to let's continue the first one collection of your id card and your brp when you did your visa application you most probably registered the post office or the university that you are attending or your workplace as the place of collection for your BRP. So once you get into the UK, you will go to any of these places that you have already put down during your visa application as your collection point and collect your BRP card. This has to be done 10 days within your arrival time because if you don't do that, they might return it back to the offices where it was sent to and you will have to go back to this office and go through a lot of processes to get this brp back and also you get what your student if you're a student you get your student id card this student id card is a form of identification as a student in this country and it will also help you in any discounts that they might be offering as a student so if you don't have this id card you cannot probably claim any of these discounts. We'll go to the second one. Now you have gotten your BRP card. Now the next thing you have to do is what? Register for your NI and generate what? Your share code. Your NI is national insurance number. And this number helps you to work in this country and also help in so many things. So you just go to the www.ukgov website and click ni and all the instruction of how you register will come out also in the ni registration address is required if you don't have an address yet you don't have an accommodation yet you can put in your school address or your workplace address as your address because they will be delivering a letter containing your ni number to any address that you choose so if you don't have an accommodation it's better you choose your school or you choose your workplace as the address that you'll be using you fill out every of the information that is asked of you and put in your brp number which you have already collected take a passport picture with your international passport make sure you take that picture in a very clear environment then you upload the, you they now give you what they call ni reference number they will send it as in an email to you and also you also see it as when you are doing your application so you try as much as possible to keep that email safe because the ni takes four weeks as they will tell you on your email but sometimes it takes longer time and this reference number might be what you'll be using for any other thing that is required of ni till so you get your ni number we'll go to the what the number three getting a real card is Getting a discounted rate card as a student offers you the opportunity to pay one over three of your fare. What does this mean? If you are going to somewhere and they are required to pay, let's say, sixty pounds for your train to that place, maybe thirty pounds going, thirty pounds coming back. With your rail card, you get to pay about twenty twenty pounds for that. Yes, one over three. You pay one over three of the actual amount and you save the rest so it getting a real card will save you a whole lot you can get your real card online but for some schools and some train station you must come to the train station so what do you do 
you go to the train station, they will give you a rail card pamphlet, which you will return back to your school and feel, you will feel the part that is meant for you, your name, your, um, all the information that is required of you, actually. You fill it in, then take it to your school, they will stamp it, fill their part as your sponsor, and you use one of, you submit one passport, which will also be stamped. Then you take this passport and the field rail card pamphlet back to the rail station and they will process it immediately while you pay 30 pounds for it and you get your rail card with this rail card anytime you are making payment you either when you are paying cash you tell them you have a rail card and they give you the discount and when you are paying online you put in the unique number that is being put down on that rail card and the discount offer is being offered to you automatically let's continue your share code is the right for you to work in the uk and for every employer that will take you you will require that you submit your share code to them so you also go to if i can i might link the the, the links for the share code on the description but it's not difficult you can just go to uh, click on www.government.uk share code they will bring out the link that you will need for your share code and you apply for your share code providing the information that they say you should provide and immediately they provide your share code for you which will last for three months you're supposed to use any generated um, share code within three months if you don't use it within three months it expires and they have to generate another one so you generate this share code and that is what is called your right to work if any employer requires for your right to work you send in the email of your share code to the person and the person or you share you send the number that is generated the person puts in the number and your date of birth and it's approved that you can work in the uk now the next one is gp registration yes general practice for your hospital you already know that during your visa application you paid for uh, uh, in um immigration health surcharge which covers for your medical expenses for the period of time you will be in the UK. So you don't have to pay medical bills again. What you will do is that once you get your accommodation, yes, it's important you, you have to get accommodation before you can actually do this particular registration because you have to choose a GP that is close to your accommodation. So once you get accommodation, you type in your postcode and you, you search for GPs near me. They will pop out a lot of GP around you and you choose anyone you want. Why choosing your GP? You, you should also read on the reviews of any of the GP that comes out. You will get to know how the GP functions and know whether it's a good place for you to register or, or not. So you register to a particular GP. If you want to register online, if you want to go to the office and register, you go down to the GP and you register. After your registration, they t tell you to go uh, maybe in 24 hours or more they will send you an email that you have been registered and your nhs number will be delivered a in a, a letter to your house to that address that you filled in during your registration so you must have a permanent accommodation for you to do this gp registration now the next thing we'll talk about is your provisional license yes your provisional driver's license this also serve as another proof of address for you when you are going to do go for a job or any registration they ask you you should provide two proof of address or stuff because you've not paid utility bill and a lot of things in this country you might not have your uh, enough proof of address to show but this provisional license also serves as that and one thing is that it you must not you can you might not have a car you can also not be driving or even know how to drive it's a provisional license you are getting it in the hope that you will learn how to drive it's not like you must have a car before you can get that you just if you have money to spare because you will pay a little bit i think about 45 pounds you go to their registration website register put in your address and everything and they will send that provisional license to your house they will send a letter a, to your house which will bear your house address and also that you have a provisional like uh, uh, you have a provisional approval that you can learn how to drive or that you can drive in the uk or student bus card and this is mainly more functional 
for students in London. Maybe your campus is in London or maybe you are staying in London and then commuting to your campus. You just go to the train station. Those places, all those um, payments machines that you see, you click on that and you select that you want an Oyster card. They will charge you five pounds for the Oyster card and you also put in the amount that you want to go into the Oyster card. This Oyster card gives you an access to travel around some zones. You choose your zone and do the registration the way that you are supposed to. It gives you the ability to travel to some zones free of charge or at a discounted price. And also to get your bus student discount card, you, you check the bus applicable to the city or the town where you are. We have Stagecoach, we have Stevenson, we have um, Coach, we have so many buses. You choose, you check for the one that is common or that applies the route of where you are going to and find a, the uh, registration process. Most of them is done online for student card. They offer you this card and you get your student discount whenever you enter a bus. So I hope I, ha I have been able to help you with your settling down and with this information it makes it more easier for you i think i've not talked about sim card yes yeah, sim card for some of us in nigeria we we're giving a sim card during this application but if you come to this country you might find out that the card that was given to us libra is a little bit more expensive than others one two it might not have a good network on where you stay so but if it's okay for you you can continue a sim card at all you might be needing to get a SIM card once you come into the country. So once you come into the country, you can type UK SIM card and it will bring out options of so many SIM cards and you choose the one that is suitable for you. Or you can ask around within your location to know the particular SIM card and network that is more effective around where you stay and you get that particular SIM card. It will help you better. Thank you and bye-bye see you in the next one please subscribe subscribe like share and comment i want to